morning, everybody. Today, if you described today, I would describe today as some days are diamonds because today the humidity isn't bad, the temperature isn't bad. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. So sit back and enjoy. Today is going to be a very fun day for me because I got to go through the archives and I went so far back in the archives. Donovan and I have been giggling all morning long because we remember the day that we're going to share with y'all. We remember all the craziness, all the antics. I'll tell you who was there that day. Dub Lawson was there. It was such a precious day. Hazel Mosley was there. It was such a precious day. So many wonderful friends. Bill Senyard and his Aunt Arlene were there. She's gone to be with Jesus. So many of the people on the program that day have gone to be with the Lord, but we have the archives. And I'm so excited that I get to share it with you. But before we go to doing that, I want to share some of the things that have happened to me in the last couple of days. I was lucky enough to be one of the... I think there were like 15 of us, but these were ladies who knew a special lady for many, many years, and we celebrated her becoming almost 60. She'll be very soon 60, but she's going to be in Alaska when she turns 60. So the choice was to celebrate her now, and we're going to share some photos. And also this weekend, I, I had, it was just a great weekend. A lot of good things happening, a lot of positive stuff going on, a lot of good showings, a lot of great things happening. So some days are diamonds. I also met a gentleman yesterday who has a 1950 Buick Riviera. It is the coolest car. It is the coolest car. And on the side of it, I thought it said Dyna Liner. That's how bad my eyes were in the shop. It says Dyna Flow. But um, the coolest, coolest car, and while I was talking to him, I ended up actually purchasing something from him, a 1954 Cadillac, which is really crazy. But with the Elvis movie coming out, of course we would want to celebrate with old Cadillacs. So it's going to be, it, it's just a really cool project for somebody, not for me, but for somebody else. It's going to be fun for somebody to just take this old gem and turn it into all it can be. That's kind of how we are. We become old gems and somebody has to turn us into all we can be. Speaking of old gems, I have some prayer requests for some of my old, old friends and my precious sister. Today, my dear friend Bonnie Lacey is in surgery right now in Huntsville. She's having back surgery and um, lucky enough to get to go to Alabama yesterday and spend some time. Didn't get to see her because the doctor held her and they went ahead and did their pre-op to get her ready for surgery today. But today she is going to have back surgery and on Thursday, my precious older sister, and I always remind her she's older, my older sister is going to have a liver biopsy. They have found cancer in her kidneys and lymph nodes and a couple of other problems, but they are looking at everything and making the decision on how they're going to treat her. So please say a prayer for Lila. She is my stronghold. She is my prayer partner. She is my wild and crazy. I love her sister and um, she needs your prayers. And also today, if all things go well, Selena Hales will get her 11th chemo treatment. So we do hope that everything is good and that her labs come back and she gets that chemo treatment because it seems to be working very, very well. So, sad news for Jasper. Very, very sad news for Jasper, but wonderful news for heaven because Tommy Shaw, somebody that we love, we absolutely, one of the best people in the world, went to be with Jesus. And um, he joins his beautiful wife, Judy, who left here way too soon. Everybody knew and loved them as a couple. And when Judy left this earth, it was devastating for Tommy. He actually um, was doing what he loved. He was riding a motorcycle. And that's what life is about in that chosen moment. God knows the time, he knows the hour, and he knows when it's gonna happen. And who would have ever thought after losing Judy and having to adjust to that? Now he has gone to be to he in heaven with her, but I want y'all to please say a special prayer for these, these two wonderful sons. You know, when I think about the years that they were at the house and, and hanging out and doing things and going, they were just kids, just kids, and, and been in our life forever. So um, please say a, a very special prayer for the Shaw boys. And, you know, um, it is one of those things, God does have a perfect plan, and if I had to choose, how was Tommy gonna die? He had battled cancer, 
and beaten the cancer and then to die on a motorcycle. It's almost like it's almost unreal and truly pre-planned. So today's going to be a day of fun music. I was looking back in the archives and I kept saying, oh, I've had Barry Scott on, I've had this one, I've had Barry Abernathy on, I've had all these people. And um, I thought, and I have the ability to share all this. And with this, I remembered the first night that Barry Scott had started his new group and it was Barry Scott and Second Wind. And so we're gonna share some of that music with you. But right now, we're gonna take you to some photos from this weekend. And I want to suggest a daycation for all of you. Get in your car and head to Cave Springs, Georgia. And some of the photos you're gonna see are from Cave Springs, Georgia. And some of the photos you're gonna see, now this is over, this is the louder milk. This is Charlie and Ira Lubin's parents' grave. And Charlie and Ira did some of the first music I ever remember falling in love with. So that is their parents' grave site. And their name was not Lubin, but when they started doing music, they changed it to that. And this is, I don't even know who this guy was, but it, he died so young and obviously loved music and it just kind of touched my heart. He's buried near the Leuven parents. So, and this is a cemetery where um, we actually went to pay respects to a, a lady who loved music and gave up a musical career to be a, ho a housewife and, a, and a, a mom and, and just changed her life drastically. But there it is, and uh, there are music notes on her grave. So, and uh, that is in a cemetery over just outside Rainsville, Alabama. So, that's what you do. You pay respects and you remember those, and uh, you think about their life. And her life might have been very different had she taken that avenue and gone into music, but she chose to be a, a wife and a mom. So, there you go. There you go. And then we celebrated this weekend, we celebrated Jane Neighbor's 60th birthday, although, and that is, that is the new baby coming to town. And uh, I'm kind of excited about it. It's a 1954 Cadillac two-door with original engine and air conditioning car. Not many cars came with air, but that one did. And um, it's a really, really cool car. And here's the event, we celebrated Miss Jane and a wonderful group of ladies. We had so much fun and we all told different things that reminded us of her and that something she blessed us with. And she blessed me with convincing me to go back to Alaska after my husband passed away. And uh, the rest is history. My granddaughter went and Tori lives there now and it's a very different world because she lives 5,000 miles away, but it was really fun for her. And every time we'd go, she'd say, Nanny, I really love Alaska. And next thing I know, she's moving to Alaska. But a wonderful day to celebrate. Happy, happy, almost birthday, Jane neighbors, as you turn 60. And my mama is laughing because mama loved hats. And I could never wear a hat because I had too much hair. So much of my hair is falling out now, I can finally wear a hat. So, but uh, I borrowed Miss Paula, Belle Paula's hat because I don't own any hats. I could never get a hat to go over all that hair I used to have before COVID, darn that old COVID. But. It was a fun, fun weekend, and to everybody who made this possible. Now, this is Cave Springs, and if y'all get a chance, please take a vacation. It is a wonderful, wonderful little town just full of all kinds of shops, and I would recommend eating there, and they're open Monday through Friday, and they're closed Saturday and Sunday, which I think is very, very weird that you're not open on Saturday when you have all that good country food, but they're not, so uh, I guess you better go Monday through Friday. But a lot of really cool shops. I wish that Ball Ground, we're growing a lot, but we don't have any really cool, cool little shops to, and, and Cave Springs is just tons and tons of tiny, tiny little shops with all kinds of things in them. So, so check it out and uh, load up some of your little friends and go over to Cave Springs and make it a daycation and uh, spend some time. And you might ride over to Alabama too. And you could go to Fort Payne and go to the Alabama, Alabama Museum if you have time for that. But just get out. And you know, that was a, a, a daycation. And that's what it's about. Just one day, do it, get it, get it done, and enjoy. Enjoy. You're going to enjoy today. I just kept looking and I kept thinking, I really want something special for the 4th of July. And I found something that my friend, Judge Harry Doss, did. He's a... Um, Wonderful man, and you know him, you love him. We're gonna share that later in the program today, but we're gonna share a lot of music. And when I think about the music 
that truly did come out of these mountains. Barry Scott has to be one of those that was, you know, from that family that it was all musical talent all through the family. So we're going to share today Barry Scott and James Jones and Second Wind as they were practicing. It was the first night that I ever spent time with them and I went over and cooked supper for the band and it was so funny because I was teaching Barry's kids how to make baby pizzas. And I said, this is so simple, anybody can do it. And I actually had Barry on Heart of the Home and taught him how to do it. And he said, even as a single dad, I can do this. I said, of course you can. So that was the whole thing is I was teaching his kids to cook, teaching him to cook and um, got to stay for band practice and they did a great job. So we're gonna go now to them doing, and this is James Jones who does a fantastic job on rose-colored glasses, made famous by John Conley. Here we go. Well, Love that song. I love James Jones and Barry Scott doing it. I love John Conley doing it. What a great, great song. Have always loved that. I'm not sure who wrote that one, but that's that's one of my favorites. Speaking of favorites, okay, 
when we go back to my favorite days in television, it had to be when we were live out there in the studio, out of the studio and in everywhere with y'all. So we have chosen next week on July the 4th to kind of have a pretend we're out there with y'all. On July the 4th, beginning at 5 p.m., we're going to have an open house here in LJ, 312 South Main Street, right across the street from the Ace Hardware Store. 5 o'clock, we're going to have live music. And I had a little thought. And I said, mm, I think we don't want the whole band because it would be so noisy that people couldn't talk and visit. So we have chosen Mr. Ella J to be there with his acoustic guitar and he's going to do all kinds of songs, all kinds of music and all kinds of entertainment from five o'clock until the fireworks start. We had the whole band set up and I kept saying it's going to be so loud that people won't be able to converse with each other and maybe that's not a good idea. So we're going to have Dwight doing it. So it's going to be acoustic guitar. He's going to be doing it. You're going to love it, and it's going to be a more personal setting. We love that, and we want you to come. We're going to have refreshments. I have several people helping me to host us this event, and we are going to be live and out there like we used to be with y'all. And I just think it's time because y'all see me on TV all the time. I don't get to see you very much. So this way, I get an opportunity to say hey, to give you a hug, to tell you thank you. And thank you for being a part of our audience for all these years. As we go back to the program we're about to share, um, I look back on that and it was 14 years ago. Well, there was two more years before that that I was doing other television. And I'm thinking that's 16 years that we've been kind of hanging out together and I don't get to see y'all much. So the opportunity arose and July the 4th, beginning at 5 p.m. here in LJ, I want to invite you, I want to welcome you, I want to tell you to come and hang out with us. We're going to have food and fun, some trivia, giving away some CDs, and just a lot of fun. We're going to also be giving away lots of gift cards to the Dairy Queen here in LJ. So stop by, listen to some music, um, tell some tales on Dwight if you know some on him, tell some tales on me. We're going to ask some trivia questions to give away some CDs. A lot of our audience knows a whole lot about my history, and the rest is history. So as I was looking at today's program that I chose to share, it was done on the 4th of July in 2008. Now think about how long ago that was, but things are still the same. We still love music, we still love those local folks, and we still love sharing it with you. And I've chosen a little bit of this program that featured a very special young man from Jasper. He was a high school basketball star. He went on to play in China. Can you imagine professional ball in China? And his name is Jeremiah Boswell. So we're going to share a little bit of that now. And when we think about 14 years ago, 14 years ago, he was still a young man. He was traveling a lot. He's married now. Life is different. Life changes so quickly, and um, I was looking at this, and I thought, my gosh, he was just a kid. He was just a kid. Heck, I was almost just a kid. I had black hair then, so it was really weird. But, but anyway, and to one of my viewers who said, oh, you look too young to have silver hair, and I said, but everybody loves my silver hair, so I've got silver hair now. And I noticed that when I was looking at the replay of this, I'm like, oh, I used to have black hair. Yeah, I did. Don't anymore. But life changes us and life moves on and we have to accept it. And I'm like, okay, we're getting older. We're getting older. So we're going to go now to Jeremiah Boswell, just a little bit of the interview with him. And then we're going to share some music with Barry Scott, some music with Bill Sinyard, some music from the 4th of July day that we celebrated in Jasper. It was so much fun. And it was such an honor to go through this. And then we're going to end. We have something very special from Harry Doss that he delivered about the 4th of July and about America. And I think on Friday when I did a closing with a beautiful young lady who has Philippine heritage, and she looked at everybody after the closing, and she said, how fitting that in America today I'm afforded a lifelong dream to buy a farm in Ella J, Georgia. And she said, you know, my parents came here as immigrants. They were brought in as a church sponsored them. And she said, I've lived here all my life and now I get to celebrate the American dream. And how fitting is it that it is on the 4th of July? 
that I get to take over the farm. So it's, it's amazing what America has done for so many people and uh, what we as citizens can do to keep our America strong. So let's do that. Everybody fly your flag and get out and celebrate the greatest nation in the world. Here we go to Jeremiah Boswell as we visited with him. Rob Jones won a gift certificate to the Three Sisters Cafe here in downtown Jasper. Jeremiah not only was a star basketball player here, you went to Columbia, you excelled. Can I have those pictures, please? Yes, ma'am. You excelled in Columbia Athletics. Kevin Baby, can we do that? He is one of the things we are most proud of. You are a hometown boy. You are leaving for China on Friday, yes, where you now play professional ball. Yes, ma'am. Around uh, the world. Tell me where much. you played basketball. Uh, I played in Brazil for a season, played in Bulgaria for a season, uh, played in Mauritius, which is off the coast of Madagascar, played in China a little bit. Now, honey, honey, do you know how many of us don't even know what you're talking about? <laughs> I didn't either. Are those foreign <laughs> words, Jeremiah? It, very much so. Yeah. And, and we have to say Jeremiah is named after one of my favorite men. Jeremiah Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and remember that Robert Redford. Oh, wow. Now, Jeremiah, did you come out of college thinking you'd get a job somewhere sitting behind a cushy desk? I did, and I actually did that for a little while. Uh -huh. and realized I just Were wasn't you bored happy. to death? I, I was bored, and I just wasn't happy. I needed to be playing. Yeah, I needed yeah, to be outside yeah. a little bit. So. Yeah. Well, you are one of the best Jasper ever produced, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have you here. It is, um, you are, we don't have a lot of success stories in athletics, but you are probably one of the biggest. Well, thank you. It means a lot to me you that are. you're saying that, but I, I really feel like what, what you mentioned before, the community here, the community. It really does help and support. And, and, and what did your daddy tell us at dinner last night? Your daddy has never had an identity. Your daddy was always Dr. Tom's son, mm -hmm. and then he was always Jeremiah's daddy. So That's, your daddy kind of got lost he's stuck in, in the middle. he did, he did. But your daddy, Tommy Boswell, is one of my best friends, and he and I together have had a little few shenanigans. We've gotten into a little, you know, <laughs> we just we like to get out and do things. He is a great guy. He's been on the program before. Yeah. He adopted two children. Yes. And did you and Kelly sit down and say, Daddy, have you lost your mind or were y'all for it 100%? We were for it. You know, we know he he's knows what he's doing. He's, he's got yeah. such a good heart that he, he knows does. what he's doing. He's a special man. He so, does. Yeah. He does. And, and he is a special, special guy. Now, when you leave to go to China, how hard is it to leave Jasper, Georgia? and end up in China. Well, it's not hard to leave the pollen and the allergies. Uh -huh. but, I got you. <laughs> but to leave the community and the family and just uh -huh. this atmosphere, the mountains, the beauty, it's, right. it is tough. Now, Jeremiah, when you land in China, will Sorry. people be to greet your plane and say, there's Jeremiah Boswell? I sure hope so, because I, I don't do speak too. the language. I do too, I do too. Now, how do you deal with a language barrier like that? Um, a lot of translators. A lot of translators, and I try to learn the key phrases to, to get by to eat. And you told me that you played basketball with a gentleman one-on-one. -on -one. Who was that? Uh, I believe the one I told you it was Yao Ming. Uh, and he is the best China has to offer? He is. He's and you beat him. <laughs> oh, I love it, Jeremiah. beat the best China has to offer. So now He's pretty tall. He's, he's he is pretty seven, tall. 7'4", seven, maybe, something like that. He's 7'4", and you're how tall? 6'3", 6'4". 6'3", 6'4". Well, yeah, that's a big difference. Well, that's a big he's, difference. He's probably faster than you. I mean. You're I'm, faster and better going. and better <laughs> and better. Now, how long will you play professional ball? As long as my body holds up, I suppose. Um, you know, I'm, What's a normal career? Um, well, it's tough to say, maybe mid-30s okay. for some well, people. The, the correct answer for that is as long as they keep writing a check. Exactly. That's right, it, that's right, as long as they pay the bills. And we have to say today, when we came to downtown Jasper, we gathered folks who could make this happen. And some of the people who can make it happen are here today. Deb's Bakery is here. You know where that is. Absolutely. Oh, honey, we all <laughs> know where Deb's Brownies home. are. And, and being hometown, we can show you. If you want to know where to hang out, I can tell you Keepsakes by Me is one of my favorite places to go. And the Red Hat ladies are here. You can hang out with them. There are so many people coming in.
whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, before we go to music, I have one more prayer request. I didn't do this early because um, I didn't want to get emotional early. <laughs> My sweet Dawn is facing something that we're not sure what it is, but she spent the day at the ER and the doctor scratched his head and said, oh, I really don't know, I'm not sure. He called in another specialist and they had a consult and they're really not sure. But she woke up with both her hands numb. This had been happening a while, but one hand, her right hand, which is the hand she uses for everything, for canning, for cooking, for changing diapers, for feeding animals, everything she does, she's right-handed. Her right hand is not usable right now. They're not sure. They have ruled out a stroke. They really don't know what is going on. So they are sending her to a specialist in Atlanta and we hope that they can solve the problem. Um, it is neurological, but we don't know exactly what it is. And um, so please, 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 everybody who knows me knows that my Dawn is my strong, strong Dawn, and she got me through some crazy stuff. Now it is time for us to get her through some crazy stuff. She is nervous, she's concerned, but she said, Mama, it's all gonna be okay. Um, she ha now has no use of her right hand, which is very scary, but we're hoping that some miracle will happen and they will get things working again. So let's hope that the problem stops and doesn't get any worse. But number one, let's hope they can figure out what it is because when two doctors are scratching their head and they really don't know what they're dealing with, um, I don't know what it's gonna take to find out. But anyway, please put Precious Dawn on your prayer list and um, it is it's just very strange because she is the do all, be all, get all done for everybody. And now we need to be getting it done for her. So please add her to your prayer list. We're gonna go now to Sweet Barry Scott and I think his sister was singing with him this day and his niece, so here we go. My bags are packed, it's time to hit the highway Gotta go and be a music man again I can't believe our time has come and gone My, how the time flies when you're home 
My pickup truck still sitting in the driveway And I'm already missing the one I love With a hug and kiss and prayer to the Lord to keep you I'm back out on the road singing a song And when the eagle flies I'll be coming home again Where my heart is now and where it's always been Though the miles separate us for a week or maybe two When the eagle flies I'll be coming home to you The curtain's going down for the last show and I'm thinking about my family back at home I think I could keep from going crazy If I can just hear your sweet voice on the phone It makes me wonder why I have to leave you Cause without your family, life ain't worth a thing All I know is God put me here for a reason And He will bring me back to you on an eagle's wing And when the eagle flies, I'll be coming home again where my heart is now and where it's always been Though the miles separate us for a week or maybe two When the eagle flies I'll be coming home to you When the eagle flies I'll be coming home again where my heart is now and where it's always been And though the miles separate us for a week or maybe two When the eagle flies I'll be coming home to you and When the eagle flies I'll be coming home That old silver eagle flies I'll be coming home to you A Barry Scott original. He wrote that song. He was on the road traveling with Doyle Lawson. He loved his job, but he hated leaving his family. And um, I love it. He sat on my front porch at Harris Farm and sang that to me many, many times and just love it. I love the idea that we got to see Floyd Scott in the background. We got to see Ann Arlene in the background. And I also saw somebody dear and dear to my heart. Charles. Um, Charlene and Charles had a wonderful love story and then he went to be with Jesus and it, it is what it is. You know, he was in the hospital, had heart conditions and um, seeing Charles the Thursday before he went in the hospital, I was coming out of the beauty shop. He was going in for a haircut and he gave me a big old bear hug and I still remember that moment, that feeling, how he was just such a loving, good, good guy. So to have all these things that I have, the archives are unbelievable. And just to bring back just a moment, just a little flash of somebody that meant a lot to all of us. So we're going to go now to Bill Sinyard. Bill Sinyard's Aunt Arlene first came here to ETC with him as a guest. And she sat down at this beautiful piano and she sang opera and she sang um, all kinds of things. She sang show things like from uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein. She, sold, she sang all kinds of things that were classical music, just wonderful, wonderful stuff. So today, I don't know what she and Bill did together, but I know what a joy it is to have them back together again because Aunt Arlene, like many of his family members, 
battled Alzheimer's and went to be with Jesus way too soon. Here we go. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. Wow, Bill's precious mama was there too that day. She actually had Alzheimer's too. Both those beautiful ladies and many of their siblings have gone on to be with the Lord because Alzheimer's took them way too soon. So um, what a precious, precious memory. What a precious memory. Now we're gonna go to something that we should all remember. We should all remember that America is America because the 4th of July, we found our independence in 1776. When we look around America today, we are the strongest nation in the world. We are the most amazing place for opportunity. And when we did the closing last week, and I, I looked at the face of this beautiful lady, Philippine heritage, and she just said, how great is it that I can be at, in America with my children and a career. She's an attorney in Atlanta. She is a wonderful, wonderful, she's a wonderful example of what America is. It is about the best, the brightest, the most amazing people who join together and let, we can do this and we can join together and we can make America all that it can possibly be. Sometimes we let it slide and sometimes we forget how important this country is. Never a day that I don't think about Lucy Harris and Rick Harris when I think about America and our freedom. We have our freedom because of young men like Noah Harris. So now we're going to listen to Harry Doss as he tells us a little bit about why, how, and what we should think about the 4th of July. ...of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With these words, the foundation of a great nation was laid. 
With these words, the course of freedom for what would become the United States of America was set. With these words, democracy would become a goal for millions around the world. With these words, 56 brave men committed treason. Yes, in signing the Declaration of Independence, 56 noble, brave men who were at that moment subjects of the King of England committed treason and stood, and stood to forfeit all, including their lives. History records, and most are familiar with the events that led to the drafting of the Declaration of Independence. The Second Continental Congress, meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, formed a committee. John Adams of Massachusetts, Benjamin Franklin of Philadelphia, Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, Robert R. Livingston of New York, and Roger Sherman of Connecticut, the Committee of Five, were, dra were to draft a suitable declaration. The committee decided that Jefferson would write the draft, which he showed to Franklin and Adams. Prior to deciding on Jefferson, both Adams and Franklin turned down the opportunity to draft the declaration, citing that if they wrote it, people would read it with a biased eye. Franklin himself made at least 48 corrections, including changing the slogan, Life, Liberty, and Property, to Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. Jefferson then produced another draft which incorporated these changes, and the committee presented this version to the Continental Congress on June 28, 1776. On July 2nd, the Congress voted for independence by approving the resolution. Twelve delegations voting in favor, while the New York delegation abstained. The New York delegation did not cast its vote for the resolution until July 9th. The full declaration was reworked somewhat in a general session of the Continental Congress. Then. Congress, meeting in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, finished revising Jefferson's draft statement on July 4th. It was approved and sent to a printer. At the signing, Benjamin Franklin is quoted as having replied to a comment by John Hancock that they must all hang together with, yes, we must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. A play on words, indicating that failure to stay united and succeed would lead to each being tried and executed individually for treason. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Harry Dawes, one of the three Superior Court judges for our Appalachian Judicial Circuit, which is made up of Fannin, Gilmer, and Pickens counties. I want to thank our hostess, Ms. Sherry Martin, for inviting me to be with you this morning. I would like to thank my cherished dear friend, Ms. Hazel Mosley, for being here in the audience today. And I also want to thank my dear friend, Lucy Van Dorn, for being here. And for all of you who are here to celebrate the 4th of July. It is my great privilege to be speaking to you today from one of the original 13 states because of the events that transpired 232 years ago. Everyone within the sound of my voice, be it here in this room or listening to North Georgia now today, is blessed to be living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please accept my sincere best wishes for a peaceful and joyous 4th of July. Now many of you know that I am a student of history and Christianity. In the course of my studies over more years than I will acknowledge, it has become my fervent belief that 232 years ago, Almighty God bestowed a great favor on the land that we know as the United States of America and brought together a group of men that we, with great reverence, call our Founding Fathers. 
Each of you this morning is enjoying life in the greatest nation this world has ever known. You are entitled to do so because of the sacrifice of many through the course of many wars and conflicts. But have you ever wondered what happened to that small, that small band of brothers in Philadelphia, our founding fathers, who stood together and boldly signed their names to the Declaration of Independence? 232 years ago. If we were truthful, most of us would answer no. However, if you pause and recall the last line of the Declaration of Independence, you cannot help but feel extreme gratitude for those courageous 56 men who said, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. What kind of men were these 56 rebels who signed the Declaration of Independence on that 4th of July so long ago? 22 were lawyers. Nine were judges. One had been governor of Rhode Island. 18 of the signers were merchants or businessmen, 14 were farmers, and four were doctors. Although two had previously been clergymen, John Witherspoon of New Jersey was the only active clergyman at the time. I think it's interesting to note that he wore his vestment throughout the sessions of Congress that hot summer. These were men of means interested in the well-being of their fellow countrymen. Forty-two had served in their state legislatures. They were well-educated men. Seven had attended Harvard University. Four each had attended Yale University and William and & Mary. And three had attended Princeton University. John Witherspoon was the president of Princeton. And George Wythe was a professor at William & Mary. Nine of the signers were immigrants. Two were brothers, two were cousins, and one, John Hart, was an orphan. They were slave owners and duelists, men who were good in business and men who were not. In short, in many ways, they were ordinary human beings, thrust into, extraordinary, into an extraordinary situation. They put their lives on the line to form the United States of America. Five signers were captured by the British. Twelve had their homes destroyed. Two lost sons in the war. And one would have two sons captured by the British. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or direct hardship during the war. Each signer has a story. And while time does not permit me to share them all, I want to share with you a few of the stories of those brave 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence. The signers of the Declaration who represented the new 13 states were from New Hampshire, Dr. Josiah Bartlett. Bartlett was a physician, and as a representative of the northernmost colony, he was the first to be asked his vote on the Declaration of Independence. He answered, yes. Also from New Hampshire was William Whipple. In 1777, while Whipple was a member of Congress, he received the appointment of Brigadier General by the Assembly of New Hampshire. A skilled and resourceful officer, he participated in many key battles. He also lost one leg to artillery shelling. Matthew Thornton completed the trio of signers from New Hampshire. Massachusetts native son, John Hancock, was the president of the Continental Congress. We're all familiar with the phrase, sign your John Hancock, which means to sign your name. Hancock was the first signer of the Declaration of Independence. And it has been said that he signed with such strength and conviction so that no one can erase or doubt his signature in promoting the liberties of his country, it has been reported that no one actually expended more wealth or was willing to make greater sacrifices than John Hancock. 
in 70, 1775, an instance of his public spirit is recorded. At that time, the American army was besieging Boston to expel the British who occupied the city. To accomplish this objective, the entire destruction of the city of Boston was proposed by the American officers in charge of the siege. By the execution of such a plan, the whole fortune of John Hancock would have been sacrificed. Yet, Hancock immediately endorsed the measure, declaring his readiness to surrender his all whenever the liberties of his country should require it. Among those who signed the Declaration of Independence and were conspicuous in the Revolution, there were, of course, a great diversity of intellectual endowment. Not all rendered to their country in those perilous days the same important services. Each contributed his portion of influence. In the group of great men which adorned that era, few shone with more brilliancy or exercised a more powerful influence than the famed Samuel Adams of Massachusetts. Another Massachusetts signer was John Adams, who would become the second president of the United States. Adams recorded for all the spirit that prevailed in Philadelphia that first week of July, 1776, in a letter to his beloved wife, Abigail, on the 5th of July, 1776. Adams writing, yesterday, the greatest question was decided that was ever debated in America, and greater perhaps never was or will be decided among men. A resolution was passed without one dissenting colony that these United States are and of right ought to be free and independent states. The day passed. The 4th of July, 1776, will be a memorable epoch in the history of America. I am apt to believe it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to Almighty God. It ought to be solemnized with pomp, shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of the continent to the other. From this time forward, forever. You will think me transported with enthusiasm, but I am not. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost to maintain this declaration and support and defend these states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of light and glory. I can see that the end is worth more than all the means and that posterity will triumph, although you and I may rue, which I hope we shall not. Two more great founding fathers, Robert Treat Payne and Elbridge Gary, were also delegates from Massachusetts. Wow. The time has gone quickly. Um, I want to share one more thing with you. Um, yesterday, I went to my grandmother's grave. She was born in 1908. She died in 1971. She, like my daughter, also committed suicide. And as I stand at her grave, I think about um, life is all about the choices we make. I hope that you will always choose life. I hope that you will always choose to find a way out of whatever you're facing and that I hope you will always find a way to smile through the tragedy, the trauma, the horrible and come out on the other side just saying, hey, I made it. I'm stronger because of something I learned. I want to share one of my very, very favorite songs with you today and I think it's very appropriate that we end with this because the day is about the choices you make and how you look at the day. So today, I choose to look at today as if it were a, a beautiful, brilliant diamond. It is a beautiful day. Enjoy every single moment. I'll see you again soon, only on ATC. When you ask how I've been here, Without you, I'd like to say I've been fine, and I do. 
But we both know the truth is hard to come by. And if I told the truth, that's not quite true. Some days are diamonds, some days are stone. Sometimes the hard times won't leave me alone. Sometimes the cold wind blows a chill in my bones. Some days are diamonds. Someday. 